Australia. Now I'm going for that edge. I don't always do this in oil because a lot of times in oil they come back and do the edge later. In watercolor, I usually do it as I'm going. You have this next one. It's a little darker, a little redder. Some greens in there. But they really don't separate that much. You've got the tilts right here. This brush is fast. <laughs> Woo! And fun. Oh boy. Now we've got, we've got these guys in the foreground. I'm going to go for it here because they kind of have to. Um, right up here in the foreground. I got to hit some black in there, didn't I? Which I don't usually do. Here's a lesson on black. Add some other stuff to it. That really came out there. Wow. If you put black all by itself, it doesn't work usually very well. But if you put it down with other color, it looks great. Blue or green here on the ground. It's watercolor, you just gotta roll with it. Um, Here's one of my little things. Sometimes I suck it up with the, with the uh, brush. Sometimes I just pull it off with the rag like that. This light green I have in there. That is lighter than that. There we go. See, by by just lifting it, you made it lighter. Unfortunately, it's not as saturated as I'd like it. So I can come back with yellow. Just yellow. Glaze on top of that. Oops, that kind of came up with some milk in it. I like it though. Not what I asked for. Well. So I didn't really change the value too much with it. It really saturates it. I'm going to go back to this. This stuff is really holding it. And I want that, uh, that trunk, because I know it's going to dry lighter. So I want that trunk to really... I'm doing the chunk first. I didn't even know I was going to do that, by the way. And other times I might do it the same way I did the oil. You don't have to have an exact science on everything you do. I know uh, a lot of artists that would disagree with me on that, though. And they don't paint like me either.
for better or worse. Mm -hmm. They would say for better, but I don't like their results, you know? I get really spontaneous results because I am spontaneous. Mm -hmm. I just let things happen. I'm going to take this one right off the top here. So if I want a more uh, sensitive tip, what I can do is just take this, lay it down and roll it. And uh, this is what's so great about working with a big brush like this is I can just Okay, now, ooh, that was fun. I went into my trees and mode there for a minute. Side of the brush. Yeah, it goes quick. It goes so quick that you might want to um, not look away for a second. Just joking. But when you're doing it, it goes so quick when you use the side of your brush like this that you might want to just actually slow down because you're going to cover really fast and you can, you can just make a big mess. Slow down. See all of this crumbly stuff around the edges? Instant oak tree. Yeah. It's better just to slow down. Even though I'm, I'm going really slow, it'll be done in just a minute. Slowing down. Taking my time. This brush is amazing. Look at this. I just went from a needle. That's an eyelash. Right? From an eyelash. And I'm only using like a quarter of the brush here to do this. If I laid this thing all the way down, I could get a one, I could do one of those big masses and just like one quick little, you know. But why would I want to do that? I don't know. Right off the table. So I have all this weight there now. What I did on the other one is I countered it with these other two guys that were sticking out of the room. And I do have other other things. We get a nice point. Might have got some oil paint in there, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. Okay. Keep going in there. Probably gonna go for some blue green. Ooh, let's try that. That's interesting. Just look at that. Now, if I wanted more of that exact, I like this blue, but if I wanted more of that exact color, just add some yellow to it. And those guys. Just remember, it's it's saturated now, but it'll desaturate as it as it dries. Because it's watercolor. Oh man, that is so cool. So we just got semi-opaque there. It's mineral colors. Mineral? Yeah, opaque colors. I love it. Why not? You get a little darker at the base. 
don't even know what this is, but it looks darker. So this is the classic composition. You have the big mass here being balanced out by the small mass here, which is pointing us back into the composition. Mm -hmm. Very, you'll see this over and over and over. Is this a steel yacht? Yeah, it, 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 you could call it a steel yard composition. Some people also refer to it as a kind of a tunnel going on here too. So see, you almost have a tunnel-like composition. So, after a while, you learn these little frameworks. Like some people call this they spell it steel yard. If you look that up, it's a compositional um, type. Um, after a while, when you play with them for a while, you'll start improvisating on them and, and developing your own little versions of them. So there, and that's really not only does it get fun there, but you. You're not so, uh, like if you do a perfect steel yard composition, usually it looks kind of stale. Almost any composition that you do perfectly looks kind of stale. So you improvise on them and you play with them and you, see, you mix it up and see what you come up with. And okay, we need a few little diagonals in there. Directing the eye around. Where's the door? Dry a little bit lighter on the top like this. What I can do is come in. It's maybe something blue, maybe something sort of violet ish on the bottom, and then dry brush in my sh sort of shadows up and underneath things. All of these. So it gives them a little bit of form. So we have the shadow at the base. You want to wait for them to dry. These aren't quite dry, but you know, it's okay. Let your let your gut be the judge of how dry it has to be. Um, Contrived. So I like to mix it up with a few different colors. Oh yeah, a good rag in there once in a while, just to keep it kind of natural looking. So you see we just have light and shadow, maybe it needs a couple more hiccups in there, you know? I'm just kind of randomizing the light and shadow a little bit more. And those are just these are they, these decisions go really fast there, there are things you'll want to take a little more time on though and think about paint them fast but think about them do you want to put it in do you not I don't know. don't think too much though <laughs> think about them but don't think too much well, I just, I don't think anyone here has got the analysis paralysis problem. Some people just analyze until they're paralyzed. See, I, I shot a little branch through that hole. I'll do that here and there, you know, just kind of. Not everywhere, but just here and there. 
Those are just decisions that I just... I'm thinking I need something through here. I like that open area, so I don't want to mess with it too much. I just think that these need to be reinforced a little bit more. And honestly, I, I look at what's up there, but it's, it's, I don't know if you can see what I'm looking at, but most of the time, I would say... Probably three quarters of my time, I'm not even looking at it. I'm just using it for... Just a, inspiration, you know, it's a whole reason to be out and paint. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll lay in a, a big flat thing like that and just come back in. This is one thing you can do with watercolor really nice. Loose, loose and find, loose, loose and find the branch. Yeah, it's just lost in sound. Morning. Okay. Yeah. I got a little friend there. <laughs> yeah, that's nice bird. But they will dry darker. So mm. if you put in a dark, just realize it's probably going to dry in really. It's you might put it in really dark and just like it, but know that it's probably going to dry darker. Sometimes if you add a lot of white, if you have a lot of white in your paint, it mm. might not dry as dark. But if you take a a dark color like a phthalo blue or something like that, and you put it on there, wait for it to dry. The rule is about two to three values darker mm. i mean it can, yeah it is it can really throw it, it's i learned that in mural painting mm -hmm. the hard way i learned it on the because i didn't really know acrylic very well so <clears throat> okay in these shadows later because there, there was kind of a, a long straight here i think that shadow really worked thank you yeah it does work very well mm -hmm. This is the, the nice thing about acrylics too, you can, it'll dry just as fast as watercolor and then and then you can do glazes on it. So it would take you weeks or at least a week before mm -hmm. you could, depending on how thick the paint is, before you could um, glaze on an oil. Mm -hmm. Got some pretty good shapes too. That's yeah, nice looking shapes. Yeah. Shape design works very well. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? The, the tree on the left side. Isn't that a gorgeous those, shape? Those, um, uh, all the, the leaf shapes go together very nicely to make a good silhouette that reads well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, the key to that is really squint your eyes down and look at it. You can see the silhouette. It is a, it's a beautiful looking, almost bonsai looking tree right there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, beautiful natural uh, branches. And he's got his blue sky, but he's got variation to it. He's got variation in everything. All these grays here in the background. And he pulls them around the side. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I like the, the Doesn't side. Doesn't that look cool? paintings that really adds dimension to it. <laughs> yeah. It's weird, huh? Yeah. Put it in a floater frame, they look great. Yeah, I like, uh, I, I hate framing. I just use it, you uh, said, yeah, push paint to hang it yeah. uh -huh. mm. right after it dries. Yeah. I, I, I don't like frames either. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do everything on those really thick ones and just, mm -hmm. just not have a frame. Mm. 
All right. Yeah, and you just take that glaze right over these whites. Now, it's good to have these whites sticking out once in a while, though, mm -hmm. where a little light came in. And, and sometimes I, I'll really, they come blue in the shadows, too, mm -hmm. a white. Mm -hmm. I'll really emphasize the blue. Especially now, you're, you're pushing more blue in your sky here, so you might want to push more blue in your shadow. Mm -hmm. Now the things are, but the more this cloud cover breaks up, the bluer those white rocks will appear mm -hmm. because they're facing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's just true. Mm -hmm. That's, and even things like this, you see how this plane right here would be facing upward? Mm -hmm. That would be a place I'd come back in and throw in a bluer version of, of this. Okay. And uh, um, contradictory, the as this bow is this way and faces down, you might get some green or orange from the ground. Uh, mm. The more the sun comes up, the more you'll see that. Right now, I'm not getting a whole lot of reflected light under that, but that, that's a place where I would hit it. Mm -hmm. So I'd pay attention to those planes. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you.